In this video, I'm going to show you how to bring in an image into Mastercam and use Mastercam's raster to vector option to turn that image into some vector lines that we can use for toolpaths. Now, in, in my experience, the, the built-in tool with Mastercam works okay. It doesn't work great. And I've found that using Adobe Illustrator is really useful, or there are some third party software out there that you can use as well that can bring in an image and, and help put uh, outlines or vector lines on that image. But uh, I thought I'd first show you the tools that we do have available within Mastercam and see if that'll help you out. Okay, so first thing is we have opened up Mastercam just to a blank screen. And I'm going to come up here to Raster to Vector. And this is going to look for an image file of some sort. And it says, do we want to merge new geometry with current geometry? I have that because I was drawing something earlier, so we're just going to hit uh, no. And it'll delete whatever's there. And it'll basically start a new file. I'm going to pick my image file, which here I've found a flag that is a JPEG file and you always want to make sure that you don't uh, steal someone's image and, and break any copyright laws so a lot of times clip art is free to use and it's a good way to to bring something in to add to your file so I just found a checkered flag I'm gonna grab that click open and then what Mastercam's raster to vector option will do is it'll open it up into a black and white conversion page and you can play with with these thresholds and see if you can get the image to to populate to something that you like. Sometimes this works really good, sometimes it doesn't. And you have to just kind of play around with it. That's my only advice is just tinker around with it a little bit, playing with the threshold till you get a clear image. This particular file that I picked is pretty basic. I didn't want to get anything that I had to fool with a bunch. So this image came in very nicely. I'm going to hit OK. And then Mastercam is going to open up this little dialog box that asks for a resolution. Right now it's set to 300. I think by default it's at 200. I jumped it up to 300 just to get a little more radius effect on some of these lines. And I'm going to leave it on Create Outlines. We'll go ahead and hit OK. And you can see up here on the left hand side at the top it's processing the contours. And it's basically just creating geometry, arcs, lines, splines, everything that it, it can to make the, the image look just like what that uh, JPEG file looks like. Okay. We have a few things here we can do as well. We can adjust parameters. We can select smooth all. And it tries to blend everything a little bit better. But I'm just going to hit OK right now. And then I'm going to exit the command. And you can see there, there's our geometry that it's created off of that image. Pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to show you another option. This is a little more time consuming. We'll click OK here. This option, manually trace bitmap image. If we select that, it's going to put an image there kind of opaque so that we can actually go in and trace this. And this would be if you wanted it to be much more precise. You could use splines, you could use lines, arcs, anything that you feel comfortable with. And you can actually go in and precisely trace this image. And you can see I'm just shooting for right down the center of this geometry. and so on. I'm going to hit OK on that. And once you get through, you can then use your geometry that you've traced for your toolpath. Now this is a great option. However, as you can guess, it's very time consuming. But sometimes when you want it done to your standards or your perfection, it's the way to go. Okay, so that is Mastercam's options for raster to vector. Let's take a look at a third-party program. Some of you are familiar with Adobe Illustrator, part of the Adobe package. 
And as a student, you should have access to that or at least a very discounted rate on the Adobe uh, Creative Cloud Suite. It's got some very useful programs in there, one of them being Adobe Illustrator. So we're just going to click New. I'm going to hit Don't Save. Okay, and I'm going to open Adobe Illustrator. Now when you open Adobe Illustrator, just like we did in Mastercam, we want to go in and open a JPEG or a image file. And I found another one that is actually a GIF file, a GIF, which is not always the best style of format, but I, I figured I would use it just to show that, uh, that it'll work with just about anything. I'm going to select fit to screen and you can see I found a checkered flag on, online that looks pretty good. It's not the greatest image. If you zoom in you can see the pixelation that it's uh, you know it's fair. It's, it's not what we would call a very high quality high res photo. But if we fit that back to screen I'm going to show you that uh, it will work pretty good. Now, when you're in Adobe Illustrator and you bring the file in like I've done, the first thing that we need to do is we need to select the image. And to do that, we're just going to use the selection tool, shortcut V. We're going to select, just click the image, and you should see a selection box around that image now. Once you've done that, we can come up here to Object, and we can come down to image trace. You should have make and make expand as an option now that it's been selected. We're going to select make and expand. And when we do that, you notice the screen blinked real quick. What that was doing is that was Illustrator going in and creating vector lines on all this geometry. Now I want to get rid of the colors so that when I bring this into Mastercam I'm bringing in simply the uh, outlines and to do that we're gonna come over here and we're gonna select this little small icon called default fill and stroke and when I select that it's gonna blank out all of the background colors now that I've done that I'm done with this I'm gonna come up to file and I'm going to select export. We're going to go to export as and then in our drop down boxes we have several different options that we can export this as. We can export it as DXF, DWG, we could do a BIMP, we could do a, a JPEG file, several. Well, we're going to do it as an AutoCAD drawing, DWG and I'll just overwrite the one that I've already done. Click Yes. It asks us for some parameters and don't get hung up here. Just go ahead and hit OK. OK. And then we can minimize that if you wish or you can just bounce into Mastercam. Once we're in Mastercam, we can come up here to File and we can merge that file in. Now before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and sketch out my part because what will happen is, is these uh, vector lines will come in at an enormous scale and you won't even be able to find your original geometry that you're trying to scale it to. We're definitely going to have to do some scaling to get this into the size that we have created our, our uh, working part. So for our project, I'm going to pick the upper left hand origin and I'm trying to think of what I made these 4 inch by 3.5 I believe is the size of your projects so we'll go ahead and we'll just draw that that shape we'll come up here to machine mill and I'll pick my Haas CNC machine we'll do stock setup bounding box We'll do a half inch. All right, and you can see my stock is going positive, so I need to fix that real quick. 
This is a uh, This is something silly that Mastercam's been doing this year. We want to change our stock origins back to zero. And I put my origin indicator at the top center, or excuse me, what am I doing? The top left corner. And that went the wrong way. Let's see. It's got me all back backwards here. Let's do it again. Let's start over. Okay, we're going to do bounding box. We're going to put our dimension in at 0.5. This time I'm just going to try selecting the top like that. And then we're going to move that to the top. I was trying to make it too difficult. There we go. Okay. Now we have our material established. And I'm going to go back to top view. And we're going to come up here to File, Merge. Okay, and then there's my DWG file. Now if you can't see it, this may be Select to Mastercam Files only. When you select Merge, click this. It'll drop down and then come to All Files and you should see your DWG file. Click Open. And at this point, just go ahead and hit OK. Now you don't see it right now because the scale is way off. So we're going to go up here and we're going to select fit. And there it is. All right. So I'm going to scale this thing down. I'm going to select the part. I'm going to come up here to transform. And then we have some options that we can use. I want to use this one over here on the side. S scale. And just the only trick that I'll tell you here is always change it from copy to move. That way you're not making duplicates. All right. And we can do a reference point. And then we can do a scale by factor. And what I'm going to do, whoops, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this smaller so I can zoom in. And I'm just going to start working this towards the origin. I'll use my transform tools. And I'll dynamically drag this over to the origin just so that I can zoom in even further. That's what we're aiming for is to get it about the size of our part. Transform, scale. We're on move, so we're going to do this by a factor again. There we go. We're getting close. Do it again. Try forty percent, maybe eighty percent. That looks good. Okay. All right. Now we have some cleanup work that we need to do. I'm going to clean it up out here, and then I'll move it over. Now you can see I have an outer border, which I wasn't intending on using. So I'm going to select it and hit delete. And you'll notice that it looked as if it was going to delete some of the geometry in the middle, but it didn't. That's because with these vector line image traces that we did in Illustrator, sometimes it makes duplicate lines on top of the geometry. So, so when I'm deleting that, I'm actually deleting a duplicate. That looks pretty good. Now let's see if there's any other duplicates. I'm going to select that and I'm going to hit delete. And then if you roll your mouse, it'll reach in and you can see that was not a duplicate. So I'm going to back up and we're going to call this good. I'm going to bring this over. Now I'm going to use my transform dynamic and I'm going to move this. I'm going to pick the origin there and I'm just going to move this approximately in the center of our part. Actually, I'm going to move it off. I'm going to show you a little trick. Okay, let's say that I want to get this image right into the center of this, this geometry here. I can select this axis that I'm trying to move. See how I'm trying to move that axis? And then you can actually come up here and snap to the center of that, that line. Same with this. We're trying to move our Y axis now. I can snap 
to the center point. Now I've perfectly centered that uh, piece of geometry. Again, you just select the line that you're trying to move, and then you come down and snap to the midpoint. All right, we'll click OK. I'm going to right click, clear colors. And now we're ready for a contour toolpath that will act as an engraving. We'll select contour. Instead of using a regular chaining toolpath, we're going to use this window. We're going to select window and then we're going to rubber band around the geometry and reading our little text up here it says sketch the start point I don't know maybe right there and then we'll click OK okay now we're presented with our tool selection page we're going to go to tool select library I'm going to go to filter select none select the chamfer mill which is up here on the top right hand corner and I'm just going to do a quarter inch chamfer mill now it's very critical that we go in and make an adjustment to this chamfer mill so that it can do the engraving properly so we need to right click edit tool and the, the adjustment that we need to make has to do with the tip by default in the Mastercam library it has a very wide tip on the engraving tool so we need to change that from a 60 thousandths tip diameter to a 0 0.01. Now you can see we have a sharper tip. We could actually even change that to 5 thousandths of a tip just, just to give us a more crisp look. You definitely want to match what you have in the machine. So if you have a 10 thousandths tip, you want to try to match that. If you have a 5 thousandths tip, you want to try to match that in your Mastercam program. Now what happens with, with our tips on our chamfer mills here at the school is we buy them with a 5 thousandths tip, but we use them two or three times and they end up being about a 10 thousandths tip just by use. All right, we'll just hit finish here and then we'll hit OK. Now what I, I did this on purpose. I want you to see that you will initially get warning messages because it cannot compensate for that tool with this geometry. So we're going to hit OK. And it's actually going to bark at you every single time that it has this little compensation issue. And you can just hit the X to get out of this. I'm going to actually hold down the Enter key because I want you to see what it's trying to do. And you can see Mastercam's trying to create these lead in, lead outs, and, and all these offset tool paths based on the diameter of the tool as if it were doing a normal contour. But we're using our contour as an engraving toolpath, not a normal contour. So we need to make some adjustments. If you go into parameters, we're going to go to cut parameters. And inside the cut parameters page, we're going to turn our compensation type from computer to off. And you'll notice this little picture now shows a line going down the center. Our vector is now going to be referencing from the center of the tool instead of trying to offset for the diameter of the tool. Contour type 2D, that's good. Depth cuts we do not need. Lead in, lead outs. We do not need any lead in, lead outs. So we're just going to turn those completely off. We're going to jump down to linking parameters and our depth is going to be negative point negative point zero one. I'll do ten thousandths. We'll select OK. We'll regenerate. And now, if I hold this at an angle and zoom in, you can see we have some toolpaths that we've created. It's a little hard to see because the geometry is very dark. All right. No, that won't let me dim it. I was going to see if I could dim the geometry a little bit, but let's take a look at this and verify, and we can take a look and, and see if this engraving looks okay. And here I can turn the wireframe off, which I will. We'll turn our precision up, and we'll just leave the speed about normal. Okay. There we go. 
All right, I'm going to stop there since this video is getting pretty long. I hope this helps. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, and I'll be glad to help you out.